All right, back with an update. Got my intercooler loosely mounted up there. Got a it's plate steel with a, some rod welded underneath for support so it wouldn't flex. And you can see that's not going anywhere. It's contacting a little screw hole up top. I gotta file that down, but um uh, yeah, it's a Mishimoto J line. Really thick core, and I've got another intercooler I was gonna compare it with. Show you a comparison, but see if I can do this one-handed. Like this thing, this core is four inches. It's four inches on the Mishimoto. And this is the intercooler, so it was uh, from Speed Daddy, but it came from DNA Motoring. I bought it originally to put on, just to try out, but... Yeah, this thing... The core is not even this thick. This is like the support this is going to be measuring. The core is actually recessed, but... Yeah, like, not even two and a half. Glare off of that. But still, I mean, I don't know how they rate these. I don't know if that would be good for 250 horsepower or whatever, but it's a fin and tube design. I don't know. It might do, might have done okay, but I decided not to use it and got the Mishimoto, and this thing is beefy. I think they have it on something rated for 500 horsepower. So I have this mounted to the factory bumper supports that I've had to cut off and uh some of these i don't know some of the hardware broke so i've ordered some more of that and i'm gonna weld some aluminum bolts on the top of the intercooler to support the top I mean, i don't this isn't going anywhere but it just makes me feel better to have the top supported and i'll have some bar coming out and uh i'm gonna have to order some more pipes i've got a whole box of the intercooler popping but i need some more 90s of the aluminum 90s and silicone 90s. I've actually made this from the a U bend I had. Cut it and uh, put use my bead roller. Put some beads on it, but uh yeah I just I need some more piping. So I've got that. I'm gonna start running some pipes and here's the this dash 10 Teflon drain for the turbo uh, 6 an Teflon for my fuel lines let's see here's the exhaust that I've done that's where the this is the where the turbo turbine outlet is that's a stainless 90 degree I hope it doesn't crack since it's cast but we'll see how that goes but I welded all these V-bands on. I did pie cuts here. And uh looks kind of bad because I did an inch long sections. I did because they're since they're pie cuts, I didn't want to blow through the metal. And I got these three inch mandrel bent pieces from a local muffler shop. And got my the bungs. I welded the bungs on there. But the reason for the pie cuts is to, to clear the front drive shaft and it comes along the oil pan will be right here so the oil will drain over that which is unfortunate but I did that with the two and a half inch anyway then I got the I welded the cutout on there three inch and then here's the two and a half I already had so that's a reducer still be able to reuse my flex then I welded my hanger back on there it looks kind of weird because there's all this weight and I had to keep changing it because it kept hitting the cross member and there's a narrow passage for that to go through so I kept bending pieces and welding it but uh I don't think it's gonna go anywhere there's plenty of clearance I've got it perfectly on there and I'm gonna weld another hanger up here to take some strain off the turbo. 
Here's one more thing I did. Um, with the oil pen installed, <laughs> it doesn't look good at all, but I welded that dash 10 old turbo oil drain right there. Still have to clock the turbo some more to get it perfectly vertical. And I have some fittings to drain into there, but maybe I can get it in this shot. There was a drain included from an engine builder up at the front. Yeah, it's up there. And that would have worked had I put the turbo in the front, like where the stock air filter was. And you can see his is a lot nicer because he had the pan off to weld it and all this. But you can't drain oil horizontally. It needs to be vertical, you know, straight down into the pan. That was really hard to do welding that. You know, standing on my head welding it on there, but I don't, I don't think it'll leak. Uh, it's not going anywhere. But when I did that, I used a close quarters drill with a 5 8 hole saw and uh, had a magnet on there and it actually magnetized the bit and caught, I think, all the shavings. And um, I made sure not, I caught the, the final plug piece and got some needle nose pliers and pulled that out. Then I drained all the oil, let it drain uh, like for a full day, and then I backfilled the crankcase with my pure argon uh, welding tank. I set it real low to take care of all the the gas fumes that was in the in the crankcase. I've heard horror stories about valve covers blowing up and oil pans exploding, but uh, when you weld. But it went, it went, it went well, you know, as long as I could get to it to weld it. Um, so yeah, if you're gonna weld your oil pan with your, with it installed, drain all your oil, let the vapors out, and backfill it with argon, and you'll probably be okay. It's ideal to have the oil pan off, but to take this out in a Jeep, you have to, well, without a, a lift, like I, you know, I don't have a lift, so. You have to take the engine out, take the oil pan off, or drop the front axle, or at least half the axle, and I didn't want to have to do all that. So, anyway, I got the drain on there. Uh, here's my close quarters drill I used to get into the oil pan. It was a, a tight fit in there, but that's a 5 8 hole saw, and it actually got magnetized from the, the magnet I had on there, and it was catching all the little metal shavings and stuff, but... It's like a Morse 5 8 I don't know if it'll focus on that or not, but there it is. Yeah, and it is made in USA. That thing went right through that oil pan, like no problem. Oh, uh, one more thing I was going to talk about was the... So here's the... This hole I have right here has a two and a half inch, just like dryer duct. And I have it run through the fender well and up here. And that did a great job of letting fresh air into my air filter I did have. I mean, going down, you could put a box fan up here and feel the air just blowing like crazy through here. And uh, so that was a good source of fresh air for my air filter. Well, my turbo, is oil cooled only so what I'm going to do here I'm going to move I'm going to cut another hole here and have I'm going to extend this pipe and have it blow, have it fixed right here on the turbo and blow an air across it you know to my filter I'm going to have and the uh, see so this it's got cooling fans on the center section and that'll be a good source of fresh air and cooling for the turbo now, if you have a water-cooled and oil-cooled turbo, I've seen online some guys, there's, a, there's a, a plug, I think that's it right there. You can take your water feed from there, from straight from the block into the turbo, and then as a drain, these guys uh, plumb it back into the, the heater uh, hose over here. And, you know, that's a good idea. If I ever swap out the turbo, you know, get a Borg Warner or something, 
I may get a, a water cooled unit. You know, you get a lot more options if you get water and oil cooled. So yeah, that's something to think about.